Hello friends, I'm Dr. Mahesh Kalra, uh, Director of Center for Numismatic Information and Studies, SEN Numis Mumbai. Uh, today we are going to discuss the topic of uh, co ancient coinages of Maharashtra under the paper of numismatics. Uh, here we are going to cover a 1500 year history of uh, ancient coinages of Maharashtra, where we'll be covering the pre-Mauryan, uh, post-Mauryan, pre-Satwana, post-Satwana periods in great detail. And here we'll be looking at the specific region of Maharashtra. By Maharashtra, we mean the part of ancient Deccan uh, where uh, uh, certain distinct developments happened. So as we all know, in the ancient period, Deccan, which was an anglicization of the ancient word Dakshinapat, was physically isolated from the rest of uh, North India. And this physical barrier led to a gradual uh, cultural and political development, which was very different from the rest of North India. Uh, the situation was further complemented by the flowing of three rivers, Tapti, Narmada and Mahanadi in different directions, which further produced certain uh, difficulties in uh, uh, traveling between North and the South. This led to a very, very important impact on the cultural and political development of the region. Furthermore, in the uh, early medieval period, there was also the language differentiation in, uh, into Marathi, Kannada and uh, Telugu, which was developing in these periods. Uh, so if we look at Maharashtra specifically, the geography of it, it is basically divided into three um, geographical zones, which also became very important as far as the geopolitical development of Maharashtra took place. The first was the Western Ghats, also known as the Sayadri Range, which divided the rest of the region into a western coastal strip called as Konkan. In the ancient period, the term for this was Aprant. And then there was an eastern half called the Northern Deccan Plateau. This was also called as the Desha region in the medieval period. So these geographical divisions, uh, once we understand, these help us understand the difference in developments, especially when it comes to uh, economic development of Maharashtra. Of uh, Maharashtra is, uh, we find is in the epic uh, period. Uh, in the epic period by that, I mean descriptions in the Mahabharat. But if you go a little earlier than that, even we find uh, differences in the prehistoric period where there's a distinct burial uh, uh, complex uh, which was developed during the uh, early uh, first millennium of the before Christ. And this was termed as the uh, megalithic period. From this period, there was a progression, slow progression to the Iron Age. Uh, where kingdoms developed and these have been described in the Mahabharat. Some of the first uh, descriptions in Mahabharat is to the region of Vidarbh, but also we later find uh, the description of Ashmak and Kuntal as later developments. If we look at the Buddhist texts, they speak about the differentiation of the entire India or the Bharat Varsh into 16 great states uh, known as the Solasa Mahajanapad. We have an ancient Buddhist text called the Anguttara Nikaya, which speaks of uh, development of these local states known as the Janapadas. From the Janapadas, there was a development to what was termed as the Mahajanpads. And when we look at the region of Maharashtra, the earliest uh, uh, description is of a state called as Ashmak or Asak. Uh, this region, uh, this period also corresponds to the uh, uh, culture of northern black polished ware, the NBPW ware, along with which we find uh, the beginning of coinage in uh, ancient India. This was also the period where there was a development of trade uh, between the various regions and this involved the increasing uh, trade in the southern regions, uh, especially with the spread of Buddhism. So we find this is a period where there is a development of various Buddhist sites in Maharashtra notably Kanheri and so many others, where we find a number of references to coins and actual coins have been found. Amongst the earliest coins which are found in uh, northern Maharashtra is a series which has been variously attributed to Andhra, Kalinga, Ashmat and uh, Vidarbha Janpads. 
One of the descriptions is uh, basically that it's the same series which has been divided according to regional variants. So we find these coins varying from 0.19 to about 1.8 grams and these majorly have an image of an elephant along with other flora and faunal symbols which have been imprinted on one side of the coin through a technique called as punch mark technique. As we all know punch mark technique was innovated in India. Uh, if you look at the coinage tradition it was a very uh, distinct technique on which only one side of the coin was stamped with very small symbols and uh, this was the earliest coinage of Maharashtra as we deem it. One of the studies uh, done by Mr. Kulkarni of Nagpur uh, describes a variety of differentiations in these coinages. He ascribes them to various Janpadas like Ashmak, Vidarb, Chedi, Kalinga and Andhra based upon certain differences in the arrangement of the symbols and finding of these coins locally. So this is the period where we find the earliest coinage in northern Maharashtra. Now if we look at the southern Maharashtra, this has been termed as the region of Kuntal Janpad and somewhere in 1875 and 76 in a village called Sultanpur which falls in the Y district of southern Maharashtra, a set of coins were found with a very peculiar single emblem on the center of the coin, uh, what has been termed as a double pulley type. So if you look at the slides closely, uh, four weights of these coins have been found with the same emblem on one side of the coin and this coin takes a specific almost appearance like a plate what is termed as a skyfade shape. In the Mauryan period a specific coinage uh, basically existed known as the Karshapanas. The Karshapanas are coins weighing about 3.3 grams and corresponding to the 32 Rati weight paradigm and these coins have been found in very large numbers in Maharashtra pointing to their profuse and uh, liberal use amongst the people of that period. Uh, hoards have been reported from various places all over northern and southern Maharashtra. So this tells us that this period was where uh, when there was a distinct single coinage under the empire of the Mauryans majorly in the period of Ashoka the Great. Uh, whose period was about 273 BC. So post this period also this coinage lasted it is said to for at least about 300 to 400 years uh, because we have later references to coins as Puranas which means that they were termed as old coins but still accepted in uh, the circulation. The important part of this coinage is that these coins are uh, recognized by five punches on the one side of the coin and amongst which there's a sun symbol which is the symbol of the Mauryans and the reverse of these coins is usually blank. Some of these coins also have reverse marks which have been termed as shroff marks of money changers who were basically testing and putting these coins into circulation forward from their region. So this is the period where we have a distinct coinage in Maharashtra post uh, say about 100 BC we find a later coinage uh, which is studied under the term of post Mauryan Maharashtra. So the post Mauryan period we hear about uh, numerous uh, political figures, local officers possibly of the Mauryans who took various titles like Maharatis. This title later became probably Maharashtris from which the term Maharashtra itself comes and then there is uh, titles like Mahatalwars Mahatalwars again meant the great chief and Mahasenapatis. So basically these were local imperial officers who became independent after the wane of the Mauryan power and they set up their local uh, bases in the areas that they were basically administering during the imperial period. One such family uh, which comes to our notice is the family of the Kuras. Their coins were first found in an excavation at Brahmapuri. Uh, which is a place near Kolhapur and from this uh, the first king's name comes up whose name was uh, Kura and it is his coins have a typical look they are in lead and they have an obverse symbol of a bow and arrow with a round legend which goes around and has the title Maharati. Maharati Kura sir. Uh, Kura's descendants later took various um, names of the mothers 
what is termed as a matronymic legend. So we have the first uh, ruler, Vilivaya Kura, who takes the title Vashishti Putra, uh, Vilayi Kura, which means that he is the son of Vashishti. This tradition was later copied by the Satwans, who followed uh, the Kuras in the region. So possibly this idea of using the name of the mother uh, came to the Satwans from the Kura experience. Uh, Kura's, uh, Viliya Kura's successor was Shivala Kura. He also names his mother Madhari. And um, uh, Vi, uh, Shivala Kura was succeeded by Gautami Putra, Viliya Kura. Again, we see uh, the use of Brahmi in this period on these coins. So this is one of the earliest coins of Maharashtra, which have not only an inscription, but the inscription is in uh, Ashokan Brahmi and which helps us allocate an early date for these coins based on the paleographical study of this script. Um, the obverse of the coin has the bow and arrow and the reverse has certain uh, emblems like a nine arched hill along with a tree in railing. According to some experts, these are Buddhist emblems and these are again indicative of the rising influence of Buddhism in Maharashtra in this period. Uh, the next phase of expansion was the Satwana period. Um, many people believe that the Satwans ruled from around uh, 250 BC, but now it has been, uh, the dates have been shifted to about uh, 100 BC or so. And though there are 30 odd rulers who are mentioned in the various Puranas, uh, only 11 rulers coins have been found so far. Importantly, uh, in case of Satwans, they issued a variety of coins all over their large empire, which spread from uh, Andhra Pradesh right up till Ujjain in Madhya Pradesh, a vast region. So they began with the concept of regio-specific coinage, where local coins and local traditions were honored and specific coins were issued for various regions. So we find though most of these coins have the same titles, Satakanisa, Satavahanasa, they have the same emblem, Ujjaini symbol on the reverse of the coin. Many of these coins are located and found in certain areas only. So we find in Maharashtra, there are certain coins with the lion emblem uh, found from Junnar, which is termed as the Junnar line tab. Then there is a very uh, important type where there is an elephant standing with a raised trunk. So these are the coins of the Satwans and these also impacted the tradition of post uh, Satwana Maharashtra. Many of these coins are found basically in copper and lead. Uh, and very small quantities of silver coins are found, which points to again the influence of Roman coins which were coming in large numbers in the first three centuries after Christ. Uh, during the Satwana period, there was a recorded war between the uh, Satwans and their rivals, the Western Kshatrapas. In that period, there was a ruler of the Satwan dynasty called Gautami Putra Satkarni, and he had a war with a ruler of the Shatrap dynasty known as King Nahapan. We find a distinct proof of this war uh, because we found a hoard of coins from a place called Jogal Thimbi in 1905. Most of these coins have uh, the coins of Nahapan with counter emblems of the Satwans. So this tells us that possibly Gautami Putra Satkarni won the war and he left his own emblem on the coins of Nahapan and this is the first distinct emblem that we see uh, of a war on coins which can be definitely dated to the period of 118 to 124 um, AD based on Gautami Putra Satkarni's inscriptions in the Nasik Pandolini caves. Uh, but this was not all. The Western Kshatraps were a dynasty which reinvented themselves post the loss to Nahapan under the dynasty of the uh, Kardamaks under Chashtan in the 2nd century. So we find a very flourishing coinage of the Western Shatraps in Gujarat region. But these coins also basically at some stage came to uh, Maharashtra, first as trade and later possibly with new rulers who possibly recovered parts of Maharashtra. So we find uh, this coinage which has basically the image of the ruler on the obverse with a reverse image of a hill with the sun and moon and a circular legend which names the king and the king's father, what is known as the patronymic legend, as the mainstay of this coinage. 
and this coinage was lasting for about 300 years. So we find this influence uh, of this coinage very deep in post Satwan uh, period of Maharashtra. Basically, uh, it is said that possibly the Western Kshatraps recovered a lot of region uh, that they had lost to Nahapan, majorly under the great ruler Rudradaman, uh, who has left his own inscriptions at Girnar, where he claims to have recovered a lot of uh, his uh, uh, territory lost to Na the Satkarnis. He also had matrimonial links. His daughter was married to one of the later Satkarnis. But that didn't prevent him from going to war again with the Satwans. And this led to again a reoccupation by the Western Kshatras of the Konkan region of uh, Maharashtra. Importantly, the Western Kshatras outlasted Satwans. And it is said that at least uh, one of the rulers uh, by the name Ishwara Datta possibly ruled uh, Maharashtra proper. And his coins have been found in large numbers resembling the archetypical coins of the Western Kshatras. So we find in this slide the coins of Rudradaman and Ishwara Datta. Ishwara Datta is believed to have been an Abira ruler, not belonging to the proper line of the Western Kshatras. And his coins are possibly issued properly in Maharashtra, though we don't have definite links, but we have an inscription of a ruler called Ishwara Sen. Uh, co connecting the dots here, we believe that it might have been Ishwara Datta himself. In the post satwan period, the major impact of Western Kshatras was that they possibly reinvented themselves as Abhiras, amongst whom Ishwara Datta may have been one of the rulers. But the major impact came in a, under a different dynasty called as the Trikutakas. Now the Trikutakas basically were a dynasty who claimed to rule a region called Trikuta. Many uh, scholars believe that this is, uh, region is located somewhere in Nasik. And the copper plates of these dynasty have been found from Kanheri in Konkan in proper North Mumbai today and Pardi and Surat in Gujarat. Uh, these name two rulers, one called Dharasen and another called Vyagrasen and the plates date them as 207 and 241 and mention them as rulers of Aprant, Aprant Deshupatis, which means the rulers of Aprant, which was the old name for Konkan. Uh, based on these plates and the later following coinage, we can connect the coinage uh, back to the Trikutakas. Uh, the coinage again resembles the Western Shatrapa coinage uh, with a major change that the hill at the center has a very pointy look to it and a round legend occurs where the king and his father's names are mentioned along with the title Param Vaishnava. So for instance the coins of Dharasen mention the entire legend as Maharaj Indra Datta Putra Param Vaishnava Shri Maharaja Dharasen. And similarly, the coins of Vyagrasen mention Dharasen as the father and connect the two. Uh, Trikutaka coins have been first reported from Karad and Kazad in Pune. Also, they have been reported from Daman, which is not very far from Pardi, where the copper plates of these rulers have been found. The coins have also been found from Maski in Karnataka, which tells us that there was a compact kingdom which comprised of parts of Maharashtra, parts of Gujarat and parts of Karnataka, which was the kingdom of the Trikutakas. Importantly, uh, the coins of Trikutakas may have been the first coinage in the post Satwan period, which may have been distinctly given a place of uh, circulation in the region. And as we know, this coinage also coincided according to the dates uh, given to the Harasen, which is 455 of the common era. And Vyagrasen has the date of 489 uh, of the common era. This tells us that they were ruling along with the period of the Guptas. This also makes them contemporaries of the Vakatakas, who were the basic uh, empire of the period of Maharashtra. Unfortunately, we don't find any coins of the Vakatakas so far. So this tells us that possibly the coins of Trikutakas was the main coinage of Maharashtra during the period of the Guptas. The next coinage which comes in Maharashtra uh, is of a dynasty called as the Kalachuris. Amongst this, the ruler mentioned, the only ruler mentioned on this coin, which again mimics 
the coins of the western Kshatras is a ruler called Krishna Raja. Now initially it was believed that this was a ruler who belonged to the Rashtrakuta dynasty. But later it was proved that this was a Kalachuri ruler who also has been named in copper plates of his son and grandson. And he takes uh, basically the title Param Maheshwaram Shri Krishna Raja on these coins. Uh, which again have the obverse image of the ruler and the reverse has a bull instead of the hail of found on the coins of the western Chhatraps. These coins have been found far away in Malwa and Rajasthan but the main circulation and uh, issuing of these coins is in the region of Maharashtra because they have been found in places like Devlana in Nasik, Karad in Satara and proper Bombay itself. In fact, two coins have been reported in proper Bombay city in an area called Cavill Road in 1875. And these were donated uh, to the Asiatic Society of Mumbai in the year 1881. In interestingly, there are also references in the 8th century uh, to the circulation of Krishna Raja Rupaks, which uh, again initially were believed to be Rashtrakuta coins but now it has been proved that these are the coins of Krishna Raja Kalachuri. Uh, giving the dates of 347, 360 and 361 to the successors of Krishna Raja, Shankar Gana and Buddha Raja, we come to the dates of 6th century for uh, Krishna Raja and that gives him about 150 years of circulation to his coinage. But this was not improbable in the period of ancient times where we find many coins have been issued for and used for about 200 years after the initial issue. Many times these coins were simply copied and recopied by the successors of the ruler because they didn't want to disturb the market idea of a coin. So these coins possibly circulated from the 6th century to about 8th century in Maharashtra and was the main coinage of Western Maharashtra. The early medieval period, uh, that is the 8th century to about 10th century period was very important uh, because this was the period where three imperial dynasties rose in India. They were the Rashtrakutas of uh, Karnataka and Maharashtra and there was the Gurjara Pratiharas who rose from Gujarat and uh, Rajasthan and then there were the Palas who rose from Bengal and they took part in a battle which was termed as the Kannauj Triangle, where there was a fight for imperial power at the center of India. That is the center of uh, uh, central India called as Madhya Desh. But importantly in Maharashtra, the Rashtrakutas reigned supreme at this period. Strangely, we don't find much of Rashtrakuta coins or little or no numismatic imprint of their coins. What we instead find is a coinage of the rivals of the Rashtrakutas, that is the Gurjar Pratiharas. The Gurjar Pratiharas basically began uh, again in the 8th century and they began issuing copies of what is termed as the Sassanid coin uh, series which was copied and recopied by Indian rulers and the Gurjar Pratiharas were the major power which copied this coinage uh, and issued them with three or four titles like Shri Vigra, um, Shri Adivara and Shri Vinayakpala inscribed on the reverse of the coin in Nagri of that period. These coins were again copied and recopied by the successors of Gurjar Pratiharas in 10th century when they went out of power and this was re-enacted in Maharashtra. So we find in this period after the Gurjar Pratiharas uh, lost power, the feudatories rose up in parts of Gujarat Rajasthan and Maharashtra. In Maharashtra specifically, there was a power called the Shilaharas of Konkan and in this period we find a distinct ruler called Chittaraja who is mentioned on the coins, on the reverse of the coin you have Shri Chittarajasya in Nagri on the reverse of this coin and these coins have been compared to a series which has probably been, they have been copied from uh, a scholar called John Dell from Canada has done a very detailed study of this coinage and he has compared a certain specific look of the king on the obverse with the coins which were uh, basically coins issued by Chittaraja and he finds them similar. So this shows us that these coins were copied from a certain existing 
uh, Indo-Sasanian coin and later there were more copies made out of this coin. So this was basically a transient phase in the 11th century under the ruler Chittaraja who ruled from 1022 to about 1035 and later there was the coinage of the Indo-Sasanian coins copied and recopied in Maharashtra. So the Indo-Sasanian coinage went on uh, till about the late uh, medi uh, early medieval period which was about 12th century AD. The Shilaharas were also having cadet branches in Kolhapur uh, earlier based at Karad. Now these this dynasty is again very important. They ruled southern Maharashtra independently from about 940 uh, CE to about 1212 CE and importantly they claim that they carried a gold uh, banner of Garuda as the emblem very proudly. Thus we find many coins in Maharashtra which have uh, been found in southern Maharashtra, specific regions like Wai, uh, Kolhapur, Karad where we find coins with emblems uh, of Garuda on one side and usually uh, more symbols on the reverse. Shown in the slide here is one coin showing the Garuda on the obverse holding a snake and on the other side we find a temple and another coin we find which is there in the British Museum where we have a reverse uh, written legend in Canada. Also we find a tiny coin type of coins which are made in base gold where there is a stylized Garuda on the obverse and the reverse has Kannada legends. Importantly we also find a tiny set of coins uh, which basically are V-shaped and they have uh, Kannada legends on one side. The reverse is again uh, empty, uh, devoid of any legends. So this gives us the idea that these were again issued by the Shilaharas of Kolhapur. The coin found in the British Museum collection also has an important legend, Sri Veeramalli and these coins were then issued and reissued by the uh, Shilaharas for a very limited period of 12th century AD. Now we come to the uh, uh, last coinage by an imperial power uh, that is the Siyunas Yadavs of Deogiri. Uh, this was a very important power which rose in the 9th century but basically it rose uh, in the 12th century uh, where it came to compete with other existing powers like the Hoysalas and uh, the Kakatiyas of Varangal and became one of the three powers, major powers in South India. The Seonas of Yadavgiri first began under the ruler Seona Chandra and they established a base at Chandra Adityapur, modern Chandor of near Nasik and later at Seonapura which is now believed to be Sinnar near Nasik. So they were based in Nasik region initially and began as the feudatories of the Rashtrakutas. But after the fall of the Rashtrakutas, they re themselves with the Chalukyas of Kalyani. As we all know, the Chalukyas of Kalyani again failed in the 12th century, um, which gave rise to other feudatories becoming independent of them. And this was again the case with the Yadavas of Deogiri under Bhilama V, uh, who shifted the capital from Sinnar to the fortress of Deogiri, uh, the Seona Yadavas became a major imperial power of western Maharashtra. They came to dominate the political space of Maharashtra and Karnataka till the invasion of Alauddin Khilji, who invaded uh, Deogiri in 1296 of the common era when Ramachandra or Ram Deva was the ruler of the kingdom. So we find a very important change in the period of uh, the Siyuna Yadavs. Around this time under the Chalukyas of Kalyani there was a distinct change of the coinage of South India and the Deccan included where there was a use of increasing use of gold coins termed as the Hoons and in the period of Chalukyas of Kalyani there was an innovation of a punch mark technique of issuing coins where individual punches were again stamped on the coins which basically gave them the shape of a plate again. Uh, so this again resembles the Skyfate coins of the earlier period of the Kuntal uh, but major importance is on the center of the coin a uh, 8 petal lotus was stamped and on the border of the coins there were various emblems like uh, the conch which is the symbol of Vishnu 
and the name of the king was inscribed in Nandi Nagari script. Uh, most of the rulers who are mentioned on these gold coins are Bhilama the fifth, Singhana, Kanhara, Mahadeva, and finally the last ruler, Ramachandra, who is mentioned as Sri Ramadeva on the coins. Uh, these emblems basically were single punches, but the name of the ruler was a single punch, uh, which was imprinted on the coin. So if you look at the coin of Mahadeva, you'll see the parts of the coin. Top of the coin, you can see, see uh, the Nagari Mahadeva. And center of the coin, you can see the Padma Tanka, the Padma emblem, which basically is again a Vaishnava emblem. And you see the very distinct conch, and the lower part of this coin and on the sides of the coin there are other emblems which again are believed to be uh, emblems of the Vaishnavite religion. So this was the coinage of uh, Padma Tankas. Uh, we find the Yadavas of Devagiri's inscription speak of a lot of coins in this period but they don't specifically mention this coinage as Padma Tankas. There are other names like Gadiana which was again a standard term in Canada for these coins. Uh, a peculiar Padma Tanka which has been recently found has unique features. On one side of the coin we see distinct design similar to the Padma Tanka that is the central lotus and the name Sri Kanahar on the coin but the reverse of the coin actually shows an scene where there are two men wielding bow and arrows and just about to go to war. So this again is a unique coin but again tells us the martial race that the, the uh, Yadavas of Devagiri were. Another Padma Tanka, another coin which has been mentioned is a coin which has multiple uh, lion punches on one side which is uh, the legend Sri Shingana Dev. Now this has been again attributed to the earlier Yadava ruler Singhana the first. Apart from this the Sayona Yadavas also issued tiny silver coins which range from 0 0.09 gram to about 1.8 grams uh, with images of a lion on the obverse or stylized versions of the lion where there are dots which are connected to make the figure of a lion depending on the weight. Uh, latest studies term these units as mashakas. The basic unit of the coin is about 0.9 grams and a double mashak that is 1.8 gram coins have been found. Uh, interestingly, a variety of Yadava rulers find mention on the reverse of this coin, which is again in Nandi Nagari. So we find the names of Singhan, we find the name of Bilam, we find the name of Kanahar, we find the name of Mahadev, and few other rulers on these coins, which are again the lower unit of the gold coins, that is the Padma Tankas. So summing up, we come to the, when we look at the coinage of Maharashtra, we see a vast coinage which begins in the pre maurian period itself, in the uh, period from 6th century BC to about 3rd century BC, where there is an important coinage which was innovated by the local people of Maharashtra. Uh, this coinage is uh, basically termed as uh, or given attributed to Ashmak and Kuntal Janpan. We have also seen the period of Mauryas where again we see the local coinages uh, which were given a pass and the coins of the Mauryans basically was introduced in the region and then there was a post Mauryan period where slowly there was a move uh, where there was a single dynasty of the Maharatis of uh, Kolhapur, the Kuras who ruled for a period and issued their own coins later giving way to the Satwans. The Satwans again lasted for about uh, three centuries and issued a very important coinage in Maharashtra. Importantly, in the Satwan period, we also see the conflict with the Western Kshatras. And interestingly, though the Satwans initially won the war, we find a shift in the coinage paradigm of Maharashtra to the Western Kshatras coinage, which was again copied by many post-Satwan dynasties in Maharashtra. Interestingly, again, we find a shift from this coinage of Western Kshatras, which uh, existed somewhere in the 6th century AD, to a distinct coinage which links the tradition to the coinage of South India, that is a movement towards gold coins. 
and also we find an Indo-Sassanian coin type coming into play at this period. The last phase of this coinage is the coinage of the Sayona Yadavs, which has been covered by us in great detail post the period of uh, the Sayona Yadavs, especially after Ramachandra's loss to Alauddin Khilji, we find a slow movement where then there is an Islamic coinage coming into Maharashtra. So to sum up, today we have looked at the coinage of Maharashtra, uh, which began in the pre-Mauryan period uh, with a number of punch mark coinages which were issued by local powers. And then it was again a coinage which was adapted and uh, to the Mauryan paradigm in the Mauryan period. Post-Mauryan period, we see the rise of a local power called as the Kuras of Kolhapur, who issued their own coins in southern Maharashtra. Uh, again, this coinage was submerged in the rise of the Satwan dynasty, who issued a very profuse coinage in the region. The post-Satwan period, which again began in the 3rd century AD, saw the rise of the rivals of Satwans, the Western Shatraps, whose imitations were issued in the uh, post-Satwan period. And later we see the rise of Indo-Sassanian coins under the Gurjar Pratiharas, who are again not the dominant power of Maharashtra, whose rivals were basically the Rashtrakutas, but their coinage prevailed upon the coinage of Maharashtra. And then there were local feudatories uh, of the uh, Gurjar Pratiharas, that is the Shilharas of Konkan and the cadet branches in Kolhapur, who issued their own distinct coinages in Maharashtra. The last phase of coinage of Maharashtra was the coinage of the Sayona Yadavs. Again, this was an important coinage both in gold and silver as we've seen. Uh, and these coins were again basically measuring up to the South Indian idea of Padma Tankas and weight paradigm also matched with the Southern Gadianas. This was the last coinage of Maharashtra before the Islamic paradigm of coinage began under the Khaljis and Tughlaqs in the 13th century. Uh, importantly, the capital city of the uh, Sayona Yadavs, Deogiri was renamed as Dalatabad and that became the main mint of the Kalji Tughlaqs. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, for more information, you can uh, go to the e-text and visit e-pg Partshala for more information.